about the ROT. clock the embers yeah. got trained in minor respects by now yeah and I, I completely agree with that it's uh i saw somebody tweet about it last night there they said it's really hard to analyze predictions and things for each team because every team plays so differently because there's so many heroes that are possible in the meta mm -hmm. that it allows you for that these diverse strategies that allow both teams to say you know what i think we have a pretty good setup in each team so it definitely changes how the play style goes you have to be able to decipher what the strengths in your opponent's teams are and then be able to shut that down we saw it very good against Secret earlier, but I don't know if it'll stay that way for a while. So what do you think the biggest strengths are here for LGD squad? I'm seeing a, a lot of potential early game team fighting power. Unfortunately, we're going to see their counter ward actually being taken out before they can get to the Ops ward. That's really nicely done. That's going to protect them a lot. Do they have another sentry there? No, it looks like it'll be somewhere else on the map. Sorry, what was the question you asked right before that? Uh, LGD, I'm, I'm, what do you think the biggest strengths are for them going into this game one? Well, I really like the line pick. I think that's a you need hard disables when you're dealing with heroes like Wind Ranger or Sar. If you're just dealing with slows, they can get away from that. But stunning them or hexing them while they're trying to win wind run completely keeps them generally in position. And that's going to lead to better kills. So I think, and disables as well against Ember Spirit really works. So I think we're going to need to see DDC do very, very well this game, preferably an early blink or just always be ready behind the right person when needed. ROTK making sure to chase away the Eternal MV Ember Spirit to allow maybe to pick up the Bounty Rune. Of course, Weeha's going to get something similar here at the top area. We're going to see Team Secret running a defensive tri lane, most likely. ROTK is going to be facing up against them as kind of a solo offlane clockwork. MMY, infamous for uh, a lot of different heroes, but lately it has definitely been his Tusk. And he goes boots first, so we're probably going to be seeing a lot of early roaming action from him. Uh, meanwhile, in the top lane, we've got Siler as the Gyrocopter pair up with DDC going up against the Slardar with that heavy amount of control from Lion and the, uh, of course, insane amount of damage from Rocket Barrage, they can quite easily get a kill on Misery. I think Misery is pretty set here, though. I mean, at least for now, he's got a stout shield. Lion only has two tangos. Definitely very, very low in terms of regen. So if Misery fights him a lot, he can definitely get the upper trade advantage there and then be, be zoned a lot less. Misery. Playing this pretty cautious, goes for the sprint level one and does manage to stay just ahead of DDC because of that choice. Does take a lot of damage from the Rocket Barrage to start with, but it's looking like the Creep Wave is going to push forward, which is uh, a decent sign for him getting to that level two. Meanwhile, at the bottom lane, ROTK has actually taken a lot of damage as uh, he throws out a Cogs and accidentally grabbed Eternal Envy inside of the Cogs. That's the worst feeling, man. You're like, all right, going to just do a little Cog harass, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, there goes 300 HP of my life. Yeah, maybe he thought he was going to be able to get him close enough uh, to be within tower range, or he had enough to really threaten Eternal Envy. He did take a decent amount of damage, but with the support uh, from the Witch Doctor, and made a little tough for ROTK. Yeah, any mana drain on a Ember Spirit this early is a huge advantage because his mana pool is not that big and he is very mana based for him to be able to do damage so mm -hmm. any mana drain that Clockwork can put out could mean the difference in him surviving in the next minute or two. Which is why Eternal Levy of course has that early mango to make sure yep. that he will be able to get the uh, chains opportunity if a kill presents itself. Yep, but when you add it all up, two cog pushes, that's equivalent to a mango. You could mm -hmm. work that out to be 150 gold worth of damage, economic damage done to the Ember Spirit. Pilot Eye sitting on the uh, Bounty Rune. Probably be forced to get it. Misery is going to grab the Illusion, meanwhile, in the top lane. Throws Illusions towards the mid and see if he can't uh, just keep some pressure and an eye on where MMI is going to rotate. It's kind of interesting. He's not hiding himself too much. He's just strolling through the mid lane, going mm -hmm. from lane to lane. I think it's because there's not always a support showing on the map, and maybe he's just looking to do something like that. Oh, he's going to put the sentry down. Okay, and he does get the observer ward that was placed by puppies. This is going to make his roaming a lot easier. He can go from middle lane to bot lane a little... Uh, a little more easily, especially around rune times is when it's really important. That way his right. opponents don't know that he's sitting there waiting. That being said, with MMY being shown on the map, well, Misery actually, because he doesn't have boots, Siler's able to keep up with that sprint Ooh, and will be able to get lane. a lot of rock barrage damage. And there it is. The first blood goes to maybe as he picks up the kill on Weeha thanks to the rotating uh, MMY Tusk. That's a pretty good kill there. Kills the ward, comes back mid. That's exactly what I was referring to. And then he just goes for the easy double raise in nothing he can do to stay alive there. So MMY's pressure is really helping out maybe on the mid lane. Not that maybe necessarily needs it. Definitely one of the best SF players in the world right now. And he even went like passive first. He didn't even say, I'm going to just rely on runes here. He's just got his passive, got tons of last hits, and he's going to com be completely fine in his lane, at least until a gank comes. 
And because of that successful gank, MMY is actually looking really good on experience with his roaming, uh, being level 3. Yeah, that's amazing, actually. When yeah. you go boots first, usually you get underleveled quite a bit because you don't make anything happen. But he spent just enough time getting experience mid, a little bit of time top, and uh, that kill there is going to make a big difference. Yeah, they really put a, a decent amount of emphasis on him being able to get level 2 because obviously if you have that level 2, if you have both the snowball and the ice shards, the roaming tusk has a lot more presence on the map. That's a good point. It's something you don't see in pubs as much just because teams aren't as organized to think about other people on their team to sacrifice for someone else. But you can see it here. Really good teamwork there by LGD to prioritize that and allow them to get a kill. Once again, Secret putting a lot of pressure and making sure they get the runes. Maybe he's going to try and challenge Pile I Die, but he will be met by Puppy, who's cold feet. Make sure that maybe can't really move forward. But again, and Team Secret rotating their supports to bottom lane and Misery up to top lane to make sure the runes are completely covered. Mm. Very good for them. Um, he's pretty high in HP right now, and there isn't a huge amount of threat coming out of Windranger. So while it is a victory, I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference, especially because he does have 22 Necromastery right now. He's hitting like he has a double damage already at four minutes. Both teams thinking about some early aggression. MMY picks up a... Uh, a smoke at the same time that Pile I Die does. So we'll see whether which one of these teams is able to use that smoke a bit more effectively. Checking in our offlaners, of course, Misery repeatedly being chased away by the uh, gyrocopter is only left at level two, despite the fact a lot of times Tusk has been on map, just the dual lane has been enough to keep him at bay. Meanwhile, our ROTK clockwork with his cog blocking is able to do a bit more. Misery's gonna be caught here inside the jungle. Nice stun and TP out. This will uh, make sure, no, oh, the Hex comes in just in time, barely in range, and Misery will go down two to zero to the favor of LGD. And that's just the threat of line. I like that they paired the gyro with the line. It's like one hero is very good at disables, the other one has tons of damage as it carries. So those two together are just so amazing at zoning Slara. This may be some of a solution towards keeping Slar out. You need a carry that's very, very damage heavy and very strong at movement speed as well to be able to punish him. Yeah, as the analyst said early on, even if we do have some sort of like early pressure coming in, it's very hard for a Slardar to play aggressively into a gyrocopter yeah. because you're activating sprint and you're going into rock barrage, and that's so much damage. My misery's gonna be caught. Yeah, LGD, two times a charm. They're going to catch Misery once again. Now that Silence level six, the two supports rotate around behind the tower and get that kill. Meanwhile, Team Secret, they have a similar smoke here, but their plan is to stop the true carry. Oh, they're going to get broken on MMY, though. Oh, no, that is really bad, but Eternal Envy still going to be able to catch up to maybe. Maybe they didn't actually expect Eternal Envy to be making that rotation CDC style. Toss is still going to go for Pylite Dive, but I think he was hoping to be able to grab... Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiance top tower has fallen. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiance middle tower is under attack.
thing. Oh, look at it go. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Good. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Oh. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant's bottom tower Dinner. is under attack. Illusion! Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Incoming! Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack.
Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom yep. tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Jackpot. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Got it. Radiance Middle Tower is Maybe. under attack. Rock it on. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Time. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dead. 
Radiant's top tower is under attack. Back. Rune of Illusion. Yeah. A soldier's fortune. Dyer's middle tower has been denied. Structures are fortified. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Radiance structures are fortified. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Middle tower has fallen. Radiant structures are fortified.
do Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Fine.
Empire's middle tower. Secret has such good synergy this game, this is really the only reason why we're pointing out their advantage, but LGD is keeping it about even, the kills mm -hmm. are even, the gold is even, Gyro continues to get items. Is he building a Manta style? I think he kind of has to actually. It's kind of gross. This is an item that Gyros were building a lot when Gyro first came on the scene and then everybody realized, hey man, your illusions suck, why are you building a Manta style? It's, yeah. not, about, it's not about your illusions, it's about mm -hmm. you getting an SNY and you being strong. The only reason he's building this is because it allows him to remove Searing Chains and amplified damage and it also gives him more things that the cast can bounce to which is not all bad to have so yeah. I think it's actually a decent Manta game, but it's more of a negative. It's something that he has to do in response to a Slaughter being in the game. Another reason why Slaughter is one of the best heroes right now. Yeah, completely agree. It's one of those scenarios that if you pop the BKB and you get amp damage afterwards and focus fire, you, you doesn't even matter. RTK caught once again. These aggressive wards from Team Seeker are doing so much work for Weeha, being able to find those blink shackles time and time again. This is going to happen all game. People will continue to get shackled and killed. And Weeha's not slowing down anytime. Might blink aggressively. They found where the invis here was. Oh, he broke it! Oh, Asylor, he's gonna be caught. Weeha at the gym, anyways. Asylor, he now pops a BKB as well as Manta trying to get away, but that's just uh, gonna be a loss of yet another BKB charge. Meanwhile, in the top lane, they do get the Ancient Apparition, but still, Gyrocopter going down is all the more important. He did nothing to that. He just died. I mean, I know that was three heroes, but it was still incredible how rapidly he went down. Team Secret. I'll now take the trade off. Maybe also going for the Manta. So this is apparently the play against Lardars. Uh, DDC jumps in on Eternal Envy. Whoa, four staff is going to help out. Nice pylite dies. Potential save for Eternal Envy. He gets off the Slight of Fist and will jump back. Oh. And now the Death Ward. Well, that'll take out the Lion. Pylite die will be surrounded by Shadow Fiend. Golden Shadow Fiend and some illusions. He will go down to that one. A two for two trade off. Now, Shadow Fiend Manta is a lot better. I believe they recently added so the Manta Illusions get the souls. Am I, am I right about that? I'm pretty sure they recently changed that for SF. Generally, it's still not worth it to grab the Manta, but it's, again, pretty good in that case. He's taking Death War damage, Manta split off. Let that damage go somewhere else. Right. Secret. Rotating through their secret shop. MMYs up here. Does have uh, 2k on him. Is it ever worth, like, if, if MMY actually gets enough farm, do you think he ever considers going for, like, the mech, Guardian Greaves, or you think it's just, you know what, there's an ancient apparition in the game, never go the oh. healing item. Oh, God! <laughs> uh, I think a healing item is not terrible, especially because if you buy a mech, at the very least, you're giving yourself armor. So it might not even heal your team, but you are applying a bit of armor to everybody, and it's going to heal somebody, especially the way that AA is playing this game. It's not, it's a battle AA. It's not a sit in the back and ice blast at the radius of the other half of the map, you know? Not right. everybody's going to have the debuff, so I feel like in some cases the mech will be useful. Or if somebody gets initiated on, as soon as they take 250 damage, you can pop mech. You don't have to wait till they're low, you know? So mm -hmm. sometimes the damage will come, the ice blast will be flying in, boom, mech them, ice blast hits, mech got value. So I think it's definitely something you can build, but the thing LGD might be missing more so is damage. So MMY has to decide, do I want to go for a mech? Do I want to go for damage? And right. he got a four staff, so yeah, utility obviously. is a good idea. Yeah, obviously this item build is going to be more for the late game because uh, for now, it's going to be the Blink Dagger and Force Staff mobility being pretty key in this match. We're seeing Team Secret really making a good amount of use of those double Force Staffs from Pilot Eye as well as Puppy multiple times. Yeah. Saving allies trying to be targeted. The bottom tier 2 is going to be threatened by LGD, but they've already lost their top tier 2 in return. It looks like Team Secret are just going to keep on going for the tier 3, forcing LGD to TP back. The Daedalus is up on Envy. No Daedalus yet for Weeha here. They'll back up a little bit. What do you think the Gyro should build to deal with Slardar? Obviously, Manta's one solution. Do you grab an armor item? Do you just go for evasion with something like a butterfly? 
Yeah, it's, it's probably the butterfly, right? If if you see Weeha commit for the full Daedalus, now that's the thing, right? A lot of Wind Rangers they'll sometimes hold on to just a Crystalis, and if they see you building butterfly, they'll then get MKB rather than complete the the, the uh, Daedalus. But well, Curry's going to Secret Shop, and it is the Daedalus. So I think I think you're right. Butterfly is going to be the option, especially because Slarder is never going to make an MKB, right? Mm -hmm. And he's actually a decent damage source. Fight going on the bot lane. Yeah, chasing around, Ember Spirit will be able to get away and maybe just TP's out with his BKB. Meanwhile, Team Secret, uh, they're actually pushing up top lane. Pylai die. This is exactly true to form for him. He's creating space, right? Like, he's pushing yep. out the top lane. He knows he's very likely to be ganked. But if they don't stop him, he's going to push the creep wave all the way to the tier 3. And he's going to get farmed going towards his, uh, his Aghanim Scepter. And if they do stop him, it's just a support. It's not, yeah. It's completely fine to do. It also uses the line ultimate. These two heroes aren't TPing down to gank Eternal Envy, for example. So while it may seem like he's actually accomplishing nothing, it's a it's a tactical decision. Mm -hmm. Can I guarantee that Weeha and Envy farm for an extra 40 seconds while getting some farm myself and maybe dying? I think that's all right, especially when his net worth is pretty far down there. Part of the gold that you get is based on how much net worth your opponent that you kill has in relation to the rest of the team. And since he is so low, it's a cost-benefit analysis. I'd rather them gank me than set up a gank and maybe be successful on Windranger or Eternal Envy. Now, Misery's got 2,800. The typical build is AC after you get Blink Dagger and Force Staff. You think there's anything on else Sardar? you'd consider? As a support or as an offlane? I, I feel like BKB is usually... Oh, yeah, true, I, true. It's like alt, you either get Force or you get BKB. In a yeah. lot of cases, most offlane starters will get Force first, but some games I think a BKB is good. And this is a game where third item BKB is definitely where you should go. Oh, Just because yeah. uh, Tusk, Lion, Clockwork even, if he ever gets caught with Clock, yeah, Force will save him, but what if he just BKBs and kills him back or something? Yeah. I feel like BKB is a great option here for Slar in, in almost all games, and Wind Ranger or Ember could, in some ways, I guess they won't need AC. I guess it's all right to AC. They're far enough ahead. Yeah, they could. I'm, I'm with carry. you still on the BKB just because SF and Gyrocopter are such hybrid uh, cores in that they're able to put out a decent amount of physical damage, but they're still very relevant with their magic damage as well. Yeah. So I'd be down with the BKB first and then AC following that up. I think on later. the on the side of LGD, though, either the SF or the Gyro could definitely justify giving an AC just yeah. because of the raw each or the raw armor that it gives you, which will directly counter the Slar amp damage. But, yeah, we were talking about it earlier, right? The AC is a, a pretty good pickup versus Ember Spirits a lot of the time. Yeah. And then there's more incentive when you've got a Slardar and you need that big buff of, of armor to counteract the amp. It can definitely help, but then it puts you in this weird place where, oh, fight on DDC. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to be picked off right away. Siler will be able to get away, and that's a more important one. But they've taken away the line for 60 seconds, and Secret are probably hoping that Roshan's up and they can take this with the 4 versus 5 advantage. Unfortunately for them, it's not going to be up for another minute and a half. This gem has just helped so much. There's really not very many safe places for LGD to put wards. So the only one that's still up right now is a ward that's not useless or not useful in the slightest right now because nobody is over there. So mm -hmm. really tough game for LGD now. They don't know where to hide. They don't know where to stand, and it's caused them a lot of problems. Now, we're seeing all this control from Team Secret. I feel like we need to re-emphasize the fact that this game is still very, very close. LGD, th yeah. there's never been larger than a 4K lead, and that's what it's at right now for Team Secret. But right. LGD are still getting plenty of farm themselves, even if Secret are controlling the map a, a lot better. Yeah, the gold is close, but I, I just see the synergies and things like that and the, the map control that Secrets had all game and how farm their supports are. They don't really need any more items. Lion would love to have a Force Staff. Um, Tusk would love to have maybe a damage item or a Solar Crest, but they, they're missing a lot of these core things. All of the farm is basically on Gyro and Shadow Fiend, and nobody is even close to those two guys. And because Shadow Fiend and Gyro are so easily countered by a Shackle Shot Focus Fire or an Amp Damage Right Click, mm -hmm. the game could just go, the team fights could very easily just go awful for LGD, depending on the initiation, and that is why I think Secret is far ahead. Which is why LGD may need to uh, find the initiation first. They're actually uh, grouping up here in this bottom lane area. But Team Secret are smoked around Eternal Envy and trying to bait him out. Maybe he's going to start leading the way with the Shadow Blade. They're going to start going on his Eternal Envy. Maybe now reveals himself with the BKB, but the initiation for Misery is on point with a two-man stun. RTK locks in Weeha with the ultimate goes out for maybe, damaging him even further and bringing some of that damage reduction in. The Pylon die will be chased down by the rest of the heroes while Misery was unable to complete a kill on anyone from the side of LGD. So ultimately, the defense is strong for LGD. Good response to Team Secret's smoke. 
Yeah, that's what happens when you get initiated first, I guess. A lot of creeps there. Oh, Puppy oh. as well. Yeah. I'm not sure what this is all about, but the Shackle Shot completely misses as the Snowball sucks that right in. And now it's Weeha and Eternal Envy on the Rapid Retreat. Link away from Eternal Envy and TP out there. That was just a great DDC play right there. Do you remember that ward that got dewarded there? Mm -hmm. Secret thought, oh, we're safe. They don't have an Observer Ward over here. As they passed over to set up the gank, DDC placed an Observer Ward there and it allowed them to get that follow-up kill. And no shenanigans were going to happen in the opposite way. So that was a really nice play there by DDC. And as well, great initiation led into them not being able to initiate properly. Secret uh, was scared to go in, basically. Wind Ranger could have gone for a Blink Shackle, but when they get when you get that hard engaged on and when Slaughter just dies for almost nothing, then it's really scary and you'd rather hold the gem back and take your losses and come back in the next fight. Now, because of this fight going uh, very poorly for Team Secret, and it's right next to the Roshan pit, very clearly a free Roche for LGD. Question is whether or not they're actually going to be able to utilize this Aegis to gain some objectives, because we've seen Team Secret controlling the map most of the time, not really letting LGD most of the time get the kind of fights they want. But this is going to be a perfect pickoff to start things off. Misery the ward. Hot once again. <laughs> it did something. <laughs> Really did. <laughs> Great little gank there for LGD, and yeah, it's, <laughs> it's looking... the last 30 seconds of that ward too. Yeah, that, like they're doing really well now. They've got perfect items for what they're up against. The butterflies up on the Shadow Fiend, and there's no MKB on either Ember Spirit or Wind Ranger, so he's not the easiest hero to focus. If he just plays really aggressive now with the Aegis, and Secret is forced to go on him, it puts Secret in a really bad team fight. The only way Secret's going to win the next fight is if they kill Jarrow first. Mm -hmm. He went MKB. He's got a BKB. The MKB obviously helps him kill Wind Ranger, but it doesn't help him survive. So Wind or Jarrow is easily the target that Secret needs to go on in the next fight. Right. Which is part of the reason uh, Team Secret kind of trying to avoid fights right now. And it's perfect in these sort of situations where Wind Ranger is able to push out the top lane. And because she's such a big threat via the Aghanim Scepter on that Tier 3 tower, they do have to rotate back despite the aggressive position the LGD was in. Because it's also hard to push uphill against an Ember Spirit, a farmed Ember Spirit at that, who's got both a Battle Fury and a Daedalus. So this is definitely no walk in the park for LGD even with that Aegis. Uh, does he have an... Oh, he's 5,000 gold in the bank. I was like, his net worth is so high, but it seems like he has so little. Two items and a blink is not that much here. But what does he grab next? MKB for sure. I think that's pretty clear, right? Against a butterfly yeah. source. It's not completely needed because he's not the one that's going to do the brunt of the damage of the Shadow Fiend, but yeah. it'll add up in your Sleight of Fist, and you can do many stuns on people just by using Sleight of Fist. That's kind of cool. Yeah, the only other thing I would think of is potentially he would get like the... Um... If he felt enough pressure from LGD, he would hold on to his gold and maybe just get a, the Crystallis, right? Relatively cheap damage item and still hold on to enough gold for buyback. But he's going to do that via the Demon Edge, where the MKB, as you're talking, uh, the 30... Five hundred still sitting there. They are hunting Eternal Envy, or really anyone oh. right now. LGD maybe able to catch someone. RTK, perhaps a blind hook. No. Yeah, they they didn't expect his blink there. Maybe he was waiting to where he was by the magic bush because he thought that Envy would walk from camp to camp, mm -hmm. but he never did. He killed the camp very fast and he blinked. So he did it so fast that they didn't expect him, and they lose the kill. And this is kind of what we're talking about. Are LGD actually going to be able to utilize this Aegis or not? Because Team Secret just. They've had it all game pretty much, and it's yeah. due to the nature of their heroes, Ember Spirits, Lardar, even uh, the Wind Ranger with a Blink Dagger. They have so much mobility, they're able to push out the side lanes really aggressively and stay one step ahead of LGD most of the time. Yeah, I really like their positioning there while they did have that that major Aegis pressure and they knew that LGD was likely in their jungle. I feel like some teams when they're behind, they turtle way too much in their base. They basically say, we're not leaving our base until we win a crazy team fight and it's time to rax you. But Secret knows when it's time, time to do that and when it's time to play aggressive and when it's time to play safe. And by doing that, they better balance their resource gain and it helps keep them alive and helps keep them ahead of their opponents. Turn Lemby. Just clears through one more wave and we'll uh, back out to a more defensive position on this side shot. He's going to actually head bottom. LGD have been inside his jungle, but uh, we've seen Eternal Envy. He's routinely playing around the trees. As you can see, once again, just blinks into the side jungle. Hopefully Salvation. To stay out of the side of LGD. It's the only way to live. Well, I guess they can still Clockwork Rocket. They're still hunting him. They're putting a lot of resources towards this. They do have a gem as well. And this is what's so hard. You know he's in the side trees. They you know started. he is. But there's just too many areas to search. Yeah, your rocket only spots so much. It's a small area. You've got this ice shard as well moving around, but it's so difficult to set up kills on Ember. 
Envy has been playing very well, especially his anti-mage game as well. He just knows where his opponents are very likely to be. He very rarely does get ganked. And that game sense is one of the things that allows him to be a very good carry in situations like these. If his team can't farm correctly, or if they, they don't feel comfortable fighting, then he can still get farm while not dying. And that is something that is amazing, because it allows him to stay with the, at the top of the net worth and to stay competitive with his opponent's carries. Eternal Envy is now at the point where he can complete the MKB and still have enough gold for buyback. It's a pretty good item, too. Um, I, I don't like it in replacement of Daedalus, but when you have both, it's a nice boost to your crit amount. And just getting that little mini bash in there can help as well. Interrupt mm -hmm. animations, things like that, that sometimes throw your opponents off what they're doing. And now, what does that mean the Gyrocopter builds? Uh, you were actually talking about the AC earlier. The Butterfly was for maybe. Ugh. I don't really like AC on Gyrocopter, I... but I feel like it's an item they need as a team. They do, uh, but the clear AC target is usually a Shadow Fiend, but yeah. he's going for a MKB of his own, I think. So I I don't like AC. I feel like even a Scotty would be better, honestly. Mm -hmm. It'll give you, like, three armor. It's not a huge amount. It's something. gives you 750 HP. I think the Scotty is the way to go, honestly. You could just perma slow, win ranger. It'll give you a little bit of damage, a little bit of everything you need. I think Scotty's the way. Plus, he's got a Manta. You might as well build stat items at this point. I think Scotty's the clear the clear way to go. What about Satanic? Uh, you know, Satanic's better. Five armor, life steal. Yeah, yeah Satanic. But, but the downside, right the, the big downside of Satanic, though, because I'm going to back you up a little okay. bit on the Scotty, you're up against an Ancient Apparition, yeah, right? The Ice Blast. Stop it. The, the activist Satanic and even just the passive life steal may not be as effective. It's a hard decision. It could honestly go either way. I, I think Scotty is unlikely, but I'm pretty confident that I feel it would be the most synergistic to what he's currently at without having to go all in on just an attack speed item with the AC. Looking at some of the other heroes of LGD, we have an Ags almost complete for ROTK, uh, for Staff and Ghost Scepter for DDC, something similar for the Tusk. And you were talking about the MKB about to be finished up by maybe as well. Looks like Star's got BKB. Hell yeah. Man, it's been a long time since we were talking about that, and, and Misery had so much, you know, gold in the bank. But yeah. Well, they haven't fought no, recently. Yeah, no. there's no space for Slardar to be the farmer. It's always Weeha yes. and... And, uh, and and even then, he, Slardar is never a fast farmer either, because yeah. he's got a Slytherin Crush. It doesn't do that much damage. He doesn't have AoE. Slardar is a hero that gains gold by murdering people, and there hasn't been a whole lot of murdering in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> no, it's been a, a relatively calm late game. Yeah. As we're now 48 minutes in, 19 to 22, that net worth difference has been in the favor of LGD ever since they took that Roshan and been controlling the map decently well. Uh, experience completely dead even. We now have that MKB. LGD, I'm sure they're going to be reaching a critical like peaking point soon where they're going to try and force a fight. Of course, that's going to be backed up by them probably wanting to get Aegis and Cheese first before they go uphill. But, you know just looking at the SF by himself, like he's almost maxed out. He'd have to trade in the Shadow Blade now if he wants to get another item. Uh, he could upgrade it. It's not. It's... Is there any passives that he's going to remove? Um, yeah. It won't stop like Windrun or anything like that. It's, it's just Bash, I think. Bash? I'm not even sure if Bash gets removed. I, I would think it does, but it's not important. Yeah. It's not going to make or break <laughs> this game by any means. You say that, but watch. We'll have the critical <laughs> yeah. Bash play come in. I still feel like a Shadow Blade's pretty valuable, but mm. it's very common for teams to carry gems. But if that gem goes away and they lose gem control and they have no more gems, a Shadow Blade is amazing because yeah. then it's forcing these supports to say, well, no more magic wand, I have to carry a sentry or a dust. And it increases your, your chance of surviving in random ways. Boots of Travel was actually the item for Siler. So okay. replacing his TP, still keeping the same old items. He could hypothetically go Butterfly. In, in case he's expecting a very delayed Wind Ranger MKB. And in fact, Wind Ranger built a BKB here. So he could definitely justify a butterfly at this point. Yeah. It would be a very time sensitive item, right? Yes. It would have to be like one of those, okay, we've completed the butterfly, we have to force fights um, in the next 10 minutes. Yeah, because as soon as he gets the MKB, then you're like, I really wish ah, I didn't have a butterfly. Yeah. That's right, we forgot about the Abyssal. Oh, I was like, oh. very common for gyrocopters. <laughs> That's you're going to be like, what a great basher <laughs> on a rage <laughs> hero. I was like, are you crazy, man? Yeah, uh, melee range basically stuns somebody. It's very good against Ember Spirit. It'll give him an opportunity to potentially solo him. Yeah, and then, of course, it's one of the biggest, like, just flat damage increase items out there. Have you seen this much? Because this is the first time I've gone. I've seen Abyssal. Like, I understand I, the Abyssal's I... good. Oh, oh the, the jump inside. Oh, I got it. BKB in time, and now Weeha. He's going to be a little bit threatened by the SF, but it's not oh, time. No. The big ice blast comes right on through. That's going to be locked down too. Team Secret though, 
Start backing up. They're playing this pretty passive. Even after taking that gyrocopter's kill, they start going for MMY. Oh, oh TDC oh just going to get eliminated immediately. Maybe he's on the hunt trying to lock down anything he can. He's now going to pop the ult, but he's got to amplify damage. And Weeha will be able to get that kill and get out. They take down four of LGD. Yeah. And Team Secret will now push forward aggressively and take their first and maybe full lane of racks and two i don't know the gyrocopter is the only one with buyback and there's uh, there's no point for him to buy back right now him and a clock aren't going to be able to slow on five full years especially with the catch that he does it anyways i really don't I guess he can call down the creep wave. It'll slow things down very slightly. But if he gets caught and he gets some sort of dieback scenario here, that's just going to be guaranteed game. Call down coming through. Not even going to get any creeps, just some hero damage. He Team Secret are playing a little bit scared right now. They don't know if there's going to be more buybacks from LGD, so. He popped BKB there too. I, I don't know. Yeah, this is probably going to be Secret now. He bought Fully committing with the BKB on cooldown. So 15 seconds is what he got his team there. 20 seconds. They go top racks instead of mid racks. I guess he saved his team at double racks, you could argue. And I think that's worth it, but now his net worth is going to be far behind. They're going to go for the next lane of racks here, and they may contest with the four heroes, but they won't have that critical SF, maybe. Uh, they back off. All right, just the tier three team secret, pretty happy, and I would agree that they're in a very clear, much better position. LGD. I think they were so dependent on getting that Aegis and Cheese in order to force a good fight that if yeah. they lose both a lane and Rax and they give up the Aegis, I'm not sure if they have a chance of being able to win this game. But fortunately, Team Seeker are not going to go for the Roshan. Obviously, LGD have very long range initiation from ROTK, the Blink Daggers, Snowball. So they're a bit afraid of being caught inside the Roche pit. That's actually a BKB for the Witch Doctor. A little interesting. It's going to okay. allow him to basically just channel his ultimate. So the, the only major change change that happened to um, Witch Doctor Ags is that the Death Ward by itself does a little bit less damage. But once you do get the Aghanim Scepter, um, it, it doesn't... I'm sorry, uh, before it would bounce once at level 3, now it bounces to all 5 basically instantly. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not articulating this correctly. Do you want to handle this for me? My brain. The sucks. Ags now gives you four bounces, whereas before it was like... Four bounces and damage, right? Yeah. That was the major difference. So you don't get the damage anymore. but And the numbers are slightly scaled differently, so not very different. But So basically, it's not an item you need if you're only mm -hmm. hitting one person. Especially since your uh, Death Ward is already so powerful naturally. It's just an ability. It does insane damage. But you also have this really great synergy with the uh, Slardar. Uh, it, yes. He's got amplified damage on somebody. It's it's like a focus fire, but from a support. Actually, they increased the damage. I'm sorry. It used to go 60, 90, 120, with mm -hmm. the potential of going up to 150. Now it does 150 no matter what. Just that 16. Oh, RTK right. might get caught. Oh, RTK. He may have to use a hook shot in order to get away. But Misery's already made a side initiation on MMY. Fortunately, the Ghost Scepter will protect him for a period of time. Misery popped his BKB and he's still trying to make some sort of commitment here on the left hand side, though. Maybe. He's taking away the Ember Spear. He's going to buy back. This is full committal here. They're going to go for the uh, Taunts, but Weehaw's going to be taken out before the Ember Spear can get here. Now, maybe he may be stunned up, but Puppy gets over the side of the cliff and will be able oh. to TP out in time. Nice for staff with a little bit of assistance from Pi Lai Dai. Side of those going to catch up to Pi. Pops the homing missile. DDC's on the hunt as well. He's going to have a four staff and blink dagger soon. I'm just not sure if Pi Lai Dai's uh, BKB. No, it is going to be enough because LGD, they're not going to waste time going for that support. They have the opportunity to take Roshan. Does he know, though? Is he scared right now? I'd be scared. <laughs> All the way back to tier three, he's like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. But it is going to be Aegis and Cheese going the way of LGD. Okay. Where did that... Did, did I... I thought I saw an Abyssal. Was there no Abyssal? He doesn't have it yet. Did he bash him from ranged? Oh, he might have. I, I swear I saw the Abyssal <laughs> animation. I, That's I entirely possible. But now that he's got the Aegis, he can make the earlier commitment to the Abyssal. He doesn't necessarily yeah. have to hold on to buyback if he, yeah, if he doesn't want Yeah, that's a really good to. point. I mean, even still, Secret's initiation is... Wow. Oh, like, God. They're dead. Bye-bye, RTK. Bye, RTK. That's, that's a gem, actually. I don't, I don't think he'll notice, but... No. Completely worth it for him to go for that. Really nice grab there. Their There's... fights are just so much better, though, st even still. Like, the, the speed at which the Jaro died in that fight when Seeker got a Rax, like, that's something that's going to exist for the entire rest of the game. LGD's fights, they had to force what they did before. It was a crazy team fight. Seeker was completely spread out. Wee Hobble was by himself, surrounded by three people in melee range. That's the kind of fight that LGD needs. But it's so much harder for that fight to exist than it is for Seeker to just get a Shackle shot. Yeah. And I think one of the big things is that LGD... They have their buyback back up for the Gyrocopter in two and a half minutes.
but Eternal Envy won't have his for another two and a half minutes past that. So if they just wait a period, they're going to have this good two minute period where they can try and force a fight. If they get a kill on the Ember Spirit, potentially the game could be over from there. So Team Secret, I think, are the ones who are going to have to, again, go back to playing the mobility game, side pushing, and just draw the game out a bit more. Do you think they'll bother oh, this? God, they're actually going to make the initiation. DDC is gone. The Tuss Snowball couldn't save him in time. They will be able to get the Snowball trapping in Weeha with the help of the Ice Shard. Oh, Weeha just getting destroyed by maybe. Now Siler's going to be able to get a side slow onto Misery, but it's Eternal Envy one who keep our eyes on as he cannot afford to go down here. Reinitiation, oh, he but Misery misses the crush, and now there's the Elsa Blade. Siler catches the Slardar, and Buffy's oh. going to be caught by ROTK as as well, Team Secret are just falling to bits and pieces now as three down in LGD. All they lost was that lion. Oh. But look what happened in the middle lane. They've got to go back and defend their base first. Envy is ready. He's like, don't worry, guys, I'll win this. Takes the range barracks, hitting the melee barracks in a position where LGD was ready to force buybacks. Instead, they lose buildings. <laughs> that has got to feel horrible. That was such a good fight from LGD. I, the only thing we can really criticize out of Secret that really made the cookie crumble there was the BKB from Windranger. It prevented a force staff from an ally, oh, so he got ice yeah. sharded in, and then that stuff just hit him four times. And yeah, if he was going to pop BKB, he needed to maybe just eat the ice or eat the snowball. That way, Tusk wasn't moving with him. You know? Yeah. It's like if you're going to pop BKB, eat the snowball, start moving, force yourself, or well, or blink maybe. I don't know. But he needed to not get hit by the ice shards, and he did. There's still another 20 seconds for the Wind Ranger, so maybe uh, he might be able to go uphill and get a little damage on the tier 3, but it's really dangerous. I don't think he can uh, do it without the full 5 of LGD. Yeah, I, He's going to try it anyway. You've I got can... the catch of the Slardar coming in rather soon and That's the damage, damage of the Wind Ranger, so yeah, they force out the Glyph, they get back immediately. They still have another 2 minutes with that Aegis. And... Puppy is actually the most farmed ancient apparition I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Lincoln's. That is that yeah. is a that's an abyssal blade gyro counter. <laughs> First time I've seen that one. <laughs> like guys, we got We need a solution to this abyssal blade gyro. How do we do it? <laughs> Lincoln's on ancient apparition, sixth item. That's really good to have. Very good against line as well. Another instant disable. He'll probably put this on. Ember Spirit. Yep, there it is. He doesn't actually have any survivability items with the exception of Blink mm -hmm. and the Scotty. So this will protect him a lot against the line or those instant initiations. Yeah, that, that is really going to limit DDC's jump. And he may have to go for someone like the Wind Ranger instead. But so Vlad's as well on Misery. There's some more armor for the team. Man, they've got a double damage champion. Oh, we does have boots of travel coming up, so they may still try and force the fight in mid. Uh, Another Abyssal Blade? All right. LGD, what have you guys been studying in your free time? <laughs> like, All right, get this, guys. We get five Abyssal Blades. We stun them for, like, 15 seconds. How can they win? A hookshot comes in. Oh, the initiation from ROTK throws out Cogs immediately forced to have defensively. He did not have the rest of his team with him. Yeah. And Eternal Envy, seeing that bit of action, is immediately going to boots to travel the bottom lane and try and continue that push a bit further. Puppy, well, well, the Lincoln's going to help him out here, but he's still going to be hit by the hook shot. RTK looking to be able to get the Cogs push back, but it's actually the Shackle shot that comes in first. Oh. And now DDC, he's going to be caught as well. And MY might be able to save him, but look at the supports. They've got the Abyssal Blade out of Misery. They easily control him long enough for maybe and Siler to combine forces. Shackle shot doesn't quite land oh, there. And now DDC is going to be able to get the Hex on a Weehaw, but oh my oh. god. That slide of did so much damage. The Snowball comes in. LGD, they're deep inside the enemy base. They're trying to go for Puppy, but the Ghost Scepter's protecting for the time being. They want to get maybe, but Tyler, you can't go this deep, my friend. The Death War is just going to take him out now. The second life, he's going to be in a very awkward position as the rest of LGD on full retreat here. I don't think there's any way they can see him. The MMY, potential snowball play, picking up Siler maybe. Yeah, he grabs him, gets him out. The rest of the secret are going to be buying back to oh, make sure that Siler does get caught completely. Does get over the cliff. He's forced to turn and fight with his man to try to go for the kill on Misery. Oh. Maybe this is going to be Misery. worth it a little bit for Siler if he could just get it, but he doesn't have enough damage. MMY hoping to be able to get a little bit more. Walmart's punch not going to happen. And the missile will not be enough to kill Misery either. LGD now have 100 seconds down for the gyrocopter. He does have a buyback, but this is most definitely secret. Going to be forcing that out now. Man, this is those situations where it just helps to have so many items on your supports. Like, think how hard it was for LGD. They chase people from the large camp in the jungle all the way to the top racks just to try to get the kills they needed. And it resulted in them just barely overextending and Secret time and time again surviving. So, great fight there by Secret. It's going to allow them to finish up this racks mid, most likely. Or at least force buybacks. 
Ember, <laughs> jumping out of DDC, oh. and that chain's almost enough for them to be able to get the kill on DDC with the help of the Ice Blast, but four staff will get him away. RT, oh, oh. the MMY TP's in at the wrong time, and that's going to be a block. Eternal Envy does manage to jump out after buyback. killing the Lion. There's the buyback four staff from the Gyrocopter, but DDC does not have one for a full minute. He's going to be down. They haven't lost anything hmm. else in objectives, but Team Secret are just biding their time, waiting for their uh, opportunity to strike. I really like these Abyssal Oh Slaughter. my god! Does he even have item slots for this? Where? <laughs> Blink Abyssal, ready to go. Siler is determined to be able to catch Eternal Envy or the Wind Ranger in some sort of crazy next level maneuver. I, the problem is that his only way to stop to break the Lincolns is the Abyssal. So there's they have to combo these and waste an Abyssal Blade just to break a Lincolns. Or they'd have to have Tusk come with and do a Force Staff or something like that. Maybe he, he missiles? Like he jumps, no, no, no. missiles if there's Lincolns, no, no. that's too much The time, missile right? has to hit to break Lincolns. Oh, you're they right, you're right. It. I forgot so about that. That's, that's why I didn't kill Slardar, for example. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, oh, there really is no good options with this shot. Yeah. All right. Him in the line. Oh, see, oh aggressive force staff. And that's going to be a BKB pop. He's going to turn, try and take out Misery, but he gets a good defensive force staff. Meanwhile, Siler jumps right in, threatening both maybe and Eternal Envy, but only bringing them down to half health. Siler will continue to move on forward, but they're going uphill, and that's a dangerous met, bet, met, bet to make. Siler. No. Ooh. Starts backing away, LGD. A tense moment here for them as they've already popped a BKB. Siler's down to half health just from that one. Hookshot going on to Weeha. Do they have the damage finger attack? Not quite enough. He's low though, 800 HP. Time and time again, Team Secret. Oh, Slide of Fist onto two, TDC. He's dropping so damn low. They need to get back, but Eternal Levy, he may just try and catch up with another Slide of Fist. Doesn't get it. A blink out from DDC will get him away. Eternal Levy on the front lines will be hit by the snowball. Maybe he's going to try and target him, but he bounces back to his remnant once again. Meanwhile, Ancient Apparition will be able to take the line with that Ice Blast. The focus fire. Oh, Jump in. There's the so blink of Pistol onto Weeha with the MKB. They'll take him out. Styler making some moves now. The defense continues. Two dead heroes. One puppy's in trouble. Yeah, the supports are definitely going to be caught here. Eternal Envy comes in for the side, but now he's immediately going to be turned on. His own shot gets laid out. Force Staff will save him. Misery making the reinitiation, but the BKB oh, does not last long enough. You know, and now the Death Ward will take out that help. RTK's down and maybe has to back up to the defense of the base once again. Misery, perhaps looking for another initiation. They do have a Wind Ranger with a buyback, and he does have boots to travel if they really want to go in. They can buy back and TP in, but I just don't think that's going to be a safe play for Team Secret, yeah. especially with Roshan now up. Witch Doctor's ulti is missing as well. He doesn't even have Maledict. I think it might be time to get some points, though, honestly. Like, with the low BKB duration, if you just throw one down on a Gyrocopter and he takes, like, half of his HP pool, the Maledict could do pretty much finish him off. Or Maledict in combo with a ult, mm -hmm. you can definitely focus. He's got a four step as well. The four steps have been great from Secret here. It's really the only thing keeping them alive in these fights. I, I kind of feel like Wind Ranger needs to buy one for herself because she's really the hero that is most vulnerable on Secret. It, like, if she BKBs, it comes down to Ice Shards, and then SF hits her four times. She's not that strong right now due to all the MKBs that are sitting on LGD. And I feel like she has to make herself more survivable, or it's a huge issue for Secret. Roshan is going to be taken out here by Team Secret, unless uh, LGD managed to rush into the Roshan pit in time. But with the amp damage, it's just too much. Wow, great way to make yourself more survivable. Aegis the Immortal. All right. <laughs> and that means Weeha. Huh? He actually wants to go in, but Manta helping to uh, stop that bit of aggression here from Team Secret. So they're just hoping to control both the bottom and middle lanes, yeah. poke and prod until they either get an objective or find an opening to initiate. This hasn't been a place that Secret has been in probably 30 minutes here. Like, it looked like they were winning, but then boom, LGD kept getting Roche, kept getting Roche. And now finally they have the Aegis, they have the Cheese. They're in a good spot finally. Speaking of that, who picked it up? Uh, Misery. Yes, uh, I really like it on him because there's been a lot of fights used oh, this fight. I think LGD know the Team Secret are going to try and jump in, but the hook shot was blocked once again. RTK is just going to man mode right in with the Force Staff actually bumps back Puppy. That'll be their first target. They will be able to take him out, but meanwhile on the side, DDC, no. Actually gets a Ghost after to be able to help himself. Good slide of fist, but Eternal Envy has to bounce himself away. It's too much scariness from LGD. Two supports down. Weeha is going to be hunted a little bit. DDC 
Oh, the Shackle Shot, what are you kidding me? That was going to be targeted here, and he still has a oh, chance of getting taken out by a big critical. We have the target of MMY, but Mithrin comes in with a save. Two man stun. They need maybe to finish off Weeha, but he's going for Misery first. Start targeting Weeha as he blink forward aggressively, but that's just the ages. Meanwhile, the side of Fence comes in from the side. They've taken out MMY. RTK's next up. There's just too many heroes from Team Secret. LGD, they've been surrounded, and they don't have any buybacks. That's only going to be maybes, and there's no way he can one Good versus game. five. What oh, a game. God. One of this series between Team Secret and LGD. Holy crap, man. The items, 65 minute game. We're like three levels deep of a late game Dota game due to all this crazy stuff. How many four staffs did they have to use to even get that far? Secret looks pretty happy, semi relieved, maybe on misery. <laughs> and misery's but... just worn out.